Hammer versus Malfurion. I must protect the one. As far as my card review goes, um, I severely underrated Sunkeeper Terum. That card's insane in this deck. It's basically the new Quartermaster. One of the reasons why Stonehill Defender is in this list is because I believe there's like a 22 to 23 percent chance of discovering Tyrion and Sunkeeper like each. Like, I'm not even convinced that it's usually better to take Tyrion than Sunkeeper in, in certain value matchups, because Sunkeeper is a huge value card as well. It, it's like a quartermaster inequality in one card. It basically is a quartermaster inequality in the same card. I ran the list you posted on Twitter to Legend last night, very strong. It's very good. The only change I made is uh, I added in a curator. I think it's a good change. I took out um, the three mana legendary. I forgot the name of it, but it's the 2 2 Divine Shield guy that heals you. There's a 22 to 23% chance of discovering each of the four Palantaunt minions. I like War Leader here because I'm not like I'm not getting a better War Leader if I coin True Silver. Then I won't have any Murlocs. I do need to decide how to trade here though. I think it's better to do this one, right? If I do this, just have two health after. But I think it, yeah, it just I don't think it really makes sense against Swipe. It's only technically worse, but Swipe is just not that scary in general here. This is definitely more forceful in this hero power. Because he doesn't have something to contest the war leader without the hero power. And since he's a tempo deck, he's like wanting to spend all his mana every turn. That made no sense. Actually, it did make sense. It almost didn't make any sense what he did. Because he could just hero power my guy, and yeah, it did make the wolf a 3 3 over a 2, though. But. Seems bad. For Have you seen any good druid decks? I feel like the best druid decks that I've seen are all like these kind of druid decks, not quest. I've, I've played against ramp druid too with no quest, just a bunch of ramp stuff. I don't think that was so amazing either. Well, good thing was we have consecrate. I didn't really have anything good to do this turn anyways. He gets all his mana back though, unfortunately. If they trade on their turn, the living mana mana doesn't come back until the next next turn. I actually thought it was other, I didn't realize it was an empty mana crystal, but yeah. I was thinking of saving the coin, but I don't think he always hero power so he plays five drops. I feel like we'll get something with the steed. If I save my coin, I can coin hero power steed like one turn earlier, but I don't think that should matter. We just, we're trying to stick something for the steed, right? And Sunkeeper, while it is like the Inquality Quartermaster, he has too many tokens. It's not the best in this matchup. I'm just trying to stick something for the steed. I might still find <laughs> the curator. Do I even need it? The thing is, like, we're not losing the Valley game. We can take the Gold Chart Footman and guarantee that we have a steed buff. I kind of like that more. It's barely saving ourselves any damage because he has two one ones instead of a three one. And since we're not going to have mana next turn to re-equip True Silver because we're playing Gold Char Footman Steed, or at least some Steed, probably Gold Char Footman Steed after we took it, um, better to save my True Silver. I think Living Mana is a good card, what to do? but I haven't figured out Token Druid yet either. The light protects me. Looks like he wasn't able to kill both. Defenders, so it wasn't super important to take this, but again, he's so in. There's no reason for me to take Curator here, especially with plan hands in my hand. I just want to make sure that I can guarantee I have a buff. Ready for action. Go away. 
This guy has more health, so the three attack is worth more on the defender than on uh, the gold char footman. He actually can't even get through this. It's so good. This card's insane. I rated Steed like five out of five in my rating. It's, it's I think it's pretty correct. It's, it's cards busted. Also rated Primordial Glyph five five. The only two cards rated that high. Primordial Glyph seems like a two of in every single mage deck. It's that good. I definitely got some things underrated though. Let's do this, because Noble Sack is probably worth less than Redemption with this hero power. Yes, yeah, Steed is like a better Sludge Belcher. Like, it's so flexible. You can Hero Power Steed on turn 8, and you get a 3-7 Taunt and a 2-6 Taunt. So it's basically like a 3, you know, 2.5 attack minion with 13 health or something. 6 plus 7, yeah, 13 health. Uh, it's also like very flexible because you can play to snowball the board. So it's just like, it's, it's really good. It's actually better against Assassinate than Ancient War is in some ways because you still get the Death Rattle. You can play, like it's really like the sap in the sense that it kills both, but then you can try to plan a minion that they don't want to sap, you know, like a Galaka Crawler against you know certain like Pirate Rogue stuff or a Hydrolysis, for example. So if they do sap, you can get the Battlecry again. I really like the card a lot. I will fight with honor. I feel like there's actually druids using patches a lot, but I'm not that like confident in it, so. I'm not planning on playing Time Mage today. The next Time Mage I play is going to be a lot different. I haven't really tried it yet. I don't like the combo TK style at all anymore. I, I need to play like a tempo slash value grinder time mage somehow. Hand buff elemental pound seems good. I personally haven't tried it just because I've been in love with this mid range pally list. But I, I see like I saw Clento's list that was posted on Reddit or at least in one of the Dex Tracker websites, and it looked like it looked good. Like, it, it has a lot of reasoning for all the choices. Like, it looked really clean. I think it's Ramp Druid. This one's really good. Even starting from 4, they play like 3 fives and stuff. Whatever he's ramping. We're just playing really slow here. I like the 1-1 one, one more than Inquisitor. Because we can Hero Power Inquisitor, Hero Power turn 5, cast so many Murlocs. Plus the 1-1 one, one contests, um... Oh, not really. It does this, but... I have a Repentance, so. I don't think we ever want a War Leader for face damage in this deck. Like, unless it's our best development. <laughs> If we force a swipe, we force a swipe, right? It's almost his whole turn. Cause he could just wrath or kill the war leader first. Like I'm not I will, it's like flame tongue totem. I wanna use it to trade. Wow, that's pretty good for uh, the repentance. Yeah, 
Ancient of War. I'm trying to think time. If I should just go all face and then try. I don't know. I, let's, let's start this. This is really good. Okay, we're playing War Leader here, and I think we're trading. But I'm trying to see if I... Ancient War doesn't get taunt. Which means have taunt? I think I should trade. So let's just... Do I have lethal? 6, 7, plus 9, 16. Okay, no, no. Let's trade here. I don't think this will have taunt, right? Oh, it does. He has taunts. I'm not even sure that that worked out worse for us, though, because it definitely would have been worse for us if we had, had equality, because then we can just equality consecrate next turn to get through. But because we don't have taunts, he can kill the war leader this turn, like this, right? And then his Sogoth would still be up. Like, this definitely worked out better for us as like the way we did it. Mm, not really good here, but the 6-6 six, six body is really good here against the 3-7. You pay this deck, I think, crushes ramp because you have two qualities, Peacekeepers, and then you have uh, Sunkeeper Terum. That card's insane. We're gonna want a war leader this, it's too good. Let's discover first. Paid. We're playing a value game, right? And since we ne like, if we have equality, it makes sense to leave up Giant Anaconda because then he trades and plays the minion that can equality Consecrate. But until I get the equality or Sunkeeper, it kinda makes sense to kill it right away if I could take a good trade. Not bad. He's just gonna run out of stuff, I think. I'm actually gonna have a value ramp druid, even though this curve is so huge. Let me kill this one first in case of a taunt. Oh, dragon's not taunt, huh? Oh, chill mole. <laughs> yeah, it does. Some, I guess some do. That means I should have gone face. That's force eight ton I can't even trade for. Mmm, -hmm. that's so good. Player on second swipe. Technically, I'm not killing a big minion. I could wait and play Tyrion first. That's probably too greedy because of just swipe, right? <laughs> this card's so good. Chill Moss TGT. I did say a sucker in review. I mean, I said one of the cards is bad. The um, the quartermaster card, but the card's insane. I don't like Elise. I think Elise is really good if you can like dig for the pack, like in a cards with a lot of droll or shadow visions. But without that, it's not that good. This card never loses the valley game. At least I've never lost valley game, anyways. If it loses some tempo. Let's try to get some snowballing stuff with the Inquisitor. Time Mage. I haven't seen this in a while. We we'll have to rush this deck down. I don't know what it removes Divine Keeper with. You could try to replace with uh, the three mana legendary 2 2 Dwine Shield guy. 
this deck against this, we want to look for eye for an eye with rock pool hunter every time. I mean, with hydrolysis, if we can get eye for an eye, his ice because there's zero healing usually in this deck. And plus, even if they run Alexstrasza, like if you pop their block, they need a time warp and OTK. You know, doesn't really work. What does it lose to? Hmm. I'm not sure. I haven't really run into bad matchups yet. Caverns Rogue seems to be kind of hard. Miracle Rogue, I feel like because of the Glocka Crawlers, it's just it covers so many of the bad matchups. It's probably barrier block. There's no use of Peacekeeper, but I'm not really like trading with Murloc War Leader in this matchup either. I'm not getting more Murlocs next turn. The only reason to play one or another is to make the manor awkward for him one turn. I don't really see it. Maybe I can play War Leader turn five though, just to stop Cabal's Tome. My win rate, I don't know, I don't really have deck tracker when I play this deck most, I don't really have stats most of the time I play this deck early weekend I didn't have deck tracker. It's missing playing in bed and stuff. I don't think we use our coin here, because we need a coin of six drop. Like most times, just die to removal. Well, it works out for me. I guess the hero power would have been good, but I get to spike rich steed now. In case of Spellbender, he has a three. I'm still doing it, I'm just thinking of whether I should attack first. Um, it's a one three, gets buffed to three nine. I think we just go all face first, yeah. Hmm. And then we just Sunkeeper, tear him if he has like somehow it's Spellbender next turn. What's your game plan dealing with Doomsayers? A lot of times you have like Murloc and a Murloc, you can play War Leader and kill it. Not a lot of Doomsayers right now in the meta anyways. I guess this matchup, we'll see, I don't know, I don't have any really quality maybe. Tear him deals with Doomsayer unless this freeze like possible lately. About one Dirty Rat instead of Crawler. I don't think so because... Um, I'm not sure. It's something to consider. I don't think there's that much reason to run Dirty Rat, because I feel like Hydralis is good enough. Like, there's how many secrets is there in Paladin? There's like five secrets. I feel like you can get Eye for an Eye most of the time with one, and with two Hydralis, you can probably get Eye for an Eye most of the time. Uh, Mouse Wiz is reset for 16 months. Go, Leafs, go. Welcome back to the Strife crew. Here is a Crow Fist. Curator strong, 7 mana, 4, 6 taunt roll 2, that's stronger than the old Ancient War. Actually, my tweet didn't have Curator, but I think it's a big mistake not to run Curator. That's from Tome, right? Yeah. I don't see people running Meteor in this deck. I was thinking taking plus 3 attack, but we're already so low. Why not buff on War Leader? Because it's weaker to hard removal. Like Polymorph. We're just gonna let this go off. Actually, he's at 5, right? This forces freeze every turn. It's not really that I care about wasting the heal though, but I just want to be able to proc the block ASAP. Because if he's infinite damage, then my life doesn't really matter, you know. But the land hands. It's just I need to kill his block so I can start forcing him to have time warp up and then, you know, force him to have the combo. 
it's all about the the turn I clock him on his ice block. And the second thing it's about is uh, trying to proc my one with hydrolysis and um, eye for an eye. This doesn't allow me to proc my one, but I'd rather just proc his block ASAP. I don't even have the crab yet. I mean the hydrolysis yet. 16 cards, even if he gets time warp, he's not likely to have full OTK. So imagine it's at 13 here. I'm gonna hero power Sunkeeper this turn. But I'm trying to think if I trade my hero power, I mean my minion or my face. I think face. Let's go face here first. If it's not barrier, then we proc the block. Okay, so he's playing giant version, then it's probably no source apprentice. It's just he has another giant Alexstrasza and uh, Molten Reflections for OTK. My life kind of matters, but it's like if I'm at like 16 or 18, it's for spare. If I'm at like 25, 27, it doesn't really matter, I think. Because if my life is like too high, then he's just going to Alexstrasza me after time warp. If my life is too low, he doesn't have to Alexstrasza me. He can play like Flame Strike after and clear taunts. So I guess like I guess like, it kind of matters, but not really until I get to round fifteen. I have two taunts. Excuse me, you are on fire. The menagerie is for guests only. We're getting really close. Do we play it? Because it's not a five. But then if he's hitting me, he already has time warp. I think we're doing it. Ooh. We don't lose to Arcane Giant. Because of the taunt, we don't lose to Arcane Giant, Molten Reflection, Alex Straza right now. Because of the taunt. And he's played one Arcane Giant, so it can't be double. He can proc I for now with a ping. I think we get try him the one first because of the taunt. If we didn't have taunt, we go for it for sure. Just in case he messes up and hits us for eight. I think we can narrow this down to not being Sorcerer Apprentice combo. He wouldn't be running Medivh Valley and Sorcerer Apprentice combo because uh, that one you need to draw your whole deck. You can't run cards like this over novice, right? Because if you're going for a double Sork and Tinnitus, you effectively need all your pieces. Whereas for the Arcane Giant version, it's more flexible, like you don't have to play for OTK with Arcane Giant version as much. So I think his version is not running Source Apprentice and Tinnitus. Arcane Giant's like you're running Alex Straza too. Hmm. If he has it, we lose. I don't see a way around it with no more taunts. He has four power on board. At this point, I'm trying to draw Consecrate. For justice. Hmm. I can't get him low enough for the uh, proc at one, even with true servers and vine cleavers. He's throwing it, not as. It's kind of hybridless. Quality Consecrate Truce over here. He's at 8, right? We, ah, we can't proc his block. I like Truce over face. I can also get a taunt after he Quality Consecrate Truce over. But we don't have the clock on him.
if I don't play a ton, I'm losing the game to Arcane Giant plus Alex Draza plus Molten Reflections. But I was open to that last turn too. And you got to draw one card since last turn. There's 11 power here, not enough to kill an Alexstrasza. Oh, there's three sorcerers, huh? You can Alexstrasza and place spells to finish me off. If only I could send to one somehow with the eye for an eye. I still can't. You can just chain blocks then on me. If I can never go into one, the block is useless because it can't ping me. This part has multiple blocks in his hand. I didn't even get the first one. I can't just rely on him messing up. Oh, Abomination! I don't think we play Iron Fire with this. I still don't see a mattering, because it's only source of one damage if you polymorph the bomb. It's just two one attack minions and a hero power. At the very least he can take a tie if he can't kill me. He can just ping my face, kill it, and it's a tie. Oh, I for an eye would have stopped that, huh? I didn't see that potential play. Just burning me through taunts and then going for a tie. Oh, I didn't even realize that could be a thing. Actually, it wouldn't have even saved me because he could ping first, right, and double fireball, and he'd still be at one. So that's assuming that he's good enough to see that, but... Okay, I see. Is there any way we can do one damage? Done. Yeah, what's up? Sure. Yeah, I'm here, bro. Uh, not really. I'm in a really intense game right now. Okay. I think I see a move here. Oh, no, I can't play that. I just pass or proc get the block by eye for now. I think it's pass. I don't know. I bring life. 